beginnings of a no frills cardigan. No frills cardigan by Petite Knit. This is my no frills cardigan. No frills cardigan by Petite Knit by Petite Knit. Hi, hello, my name is Allie and I have finally finished knitting the no frills cardigan by Petite Knit. I'm coming to you today from just outside Toronto with my beautiful mug made by my very talented friend, Jessica Bromley Bartram. I will link her shop below. And in it, I'm currently drinking um, Bigelow Botanicals Blackberry Raspberry Hibiscus, which um, according to this is a cold water infusion. So we're breaking the rules today. And I think we're allowed to do that because today is a very special occasion because if you have been here before, you will have seen the No Frills Cardigan by Petite Knit that has been a work in progress in every single one of the podcast episodes that I have ever posted. But in case you're just joining now to catch you up, the reason this has taken me forever is because this is a duster length cardigan knit in DK weight and it's slow going. <laughs> And the thing is that I feel like this this cardigan being done um, is such a momentous occasion in the world of my channel that it deserved its own video. You know, I could not relegate this to a finished object at the end of my next regular podcast episode. I felt like, God, right? I felt like it really kind of deserved its own moment. And I also feel like this is the kind of project that I've heard a lot of people talk about being interested in knitting something like this, but doubting it, questioning it, being afraid to cast it on. And I thought maybe it would be useful and kind of fun to go down a little trip down memory lane to revisit my process of knitting this sweater from the very beginning. And you can kind of see the highs, the lows, and um, either just have fun going along for that journey or maybe it'll help you decide if it's one that you might want to embark on. So this video is gonna be kind of a project vlog, sort of a mashup, sort of giving an abridged version of the project updates that I gave each time that I talked about it and also cutting in my perspective from now that I finished it and my reflections on the whole process. Okay, so one last time, let's run through these project stats. This is the No Frills Cardigan by Petite Knit. This is a pattern that accommodates up to a 59 inch bust, which is close to being quite good on the size inclusive front but I would love to see that pushed a little bit further and I knit the extra small. This pattern cost 45 Danish kroner which converted out to about nine dollars Canadian. Also of note is that I knit this on 4.5 millimeter needles rather than the four millimeter needles recommended in the pattern in order to meet gauge. In terms of materials I knit this out of a combination of We Are Knitters Touch Me Mohair which one last time it's not mohair it's not mohair it is 54 percent baby alpaca 22 percent super kid mohair there it is and 24 percent mulberry silk i paired this in the color mustard with the knitting for olive merino also in the color mustard now you'll notice i have an entire untouched one of these left um i got a few i have i have two completely untouched and one that's like barely touched like i think that actually if I hadn't, um, spoiler, ended up ripping back some of the length of this cardigan, I wouldn't have touched that ball at all. So the only yarn that got used from that one barely used ball is yarn that is now like wound up in a separate little ball somewhere because it didn't end up staying in the cardigan. So I have a ton of this left over. I originally bought eight of these balls and these are giant. These are 50 grams of mohair. They're roughly double the yardage of the merino. So these are giant and I have basically three of the eight of them that I bought left over. As far as the merino, I bought 10 of these and I have about 40 grams left of this ball. Now, these are 50 gram balls, so I didn't use a lot of this last one. Again, if I hadn't knit extra length that I then ripped out, I don't think I would have needed this at all. So there's, there's definitely some spares left over. So in all, I actually used nine balls of the merino and five of the mohair. So adding all that up, I spent about $230 on yarn, that's Canadian dollars, or 240 Canadian by the time you add in the pattern cost and convert it out to US, that's about $175. Now, if I had actually known the correct amount of yarn that I would use and ordered only that, that would have saved me about $40 on this project. So I definitely, I'm gonna have some projects that I need to come up with to do with the spare yarn, but overall with that total amount spent, I mean, considering the overwhelming amount of cardigan here, <laughs> I, feel, I feel okay with that number. It's obviously a really big number, but it's also a really big cardigan. And truthfully, like if I were to try to buy something like this in a store, made it of comparable materials, it would not have been cheaper, so. So the No Frills Cardigan is a top-down raglan style construction that is knit flat. You don't have to do steeping or anything like that. And you also knit the button band at the same time, so you don't have to pick up stitches at the end and do that as the very last step, which thank goodness that would not have gone well for me. <laughs> now, of course, I am going to stand up and show you the finished cardigan in all its glory, but I think, I think we should work our way there. We're gonna go 
all the way back to January because I <laughs> I first cast this project on on January 5th and I finished it on July 25th. So the whole time I was kind of roughly estimating six months for this project and that was pretty accurate. I think at the end I there were definitely things that if certain mishaps hadn't occurred I could have finished this quite a bit sooner. I probably could have been done closer to the five month mark but as things kind of um, became problems, as annoying things came up, I did find myself motivated by that six month deadline. I was like, this cannot take more than six months. In no, in no world is that allowed to happen. So that was definitely um, a little bit of a helpful deadline toward the end of this project to keep it under six months and under six months it was, barely. All right, let's do it. Let's time travel back to the very dawn of Valley Makes Everything where, you know what, I hope this gives you some appreciation for the fiddling that I've done to try to figure out how to make my footage look better. Um, so enjoy seeing what it used to look like. So I've got this nice bag and out of it, we are going to pull um, the beginnings of a no frills cardigan um, from Petite Knit. I had a very specific color in my head that I wanted this cardigan to be. So I found, so Knitting for Olive has mohair that is designed to go with basically all of their merinos but I so I feel like this is a, a sort of like very middle of the road mustard where it's kind of halfway between like a sunny orangey yellow and like a muddy like really browny mustard yellow um it's very sort of in the middle but their matching mohair matching I'm gonna put that in quotes matching mohair was very much on like the browny mustard side and I was like I feel like when I combine those, the sweater is not going to be the color that I want it to be. And it just, it was like a quest. Like I had this yarn for months <laughs> before I managed to find the mohair that I wanted to pair with it. What I eventually found worked out very well because We Are Knitters was having a sale where a few colors of their Touch Me mohair was like half off. So this just happened to be one of them and it's perfect it's the exact color that i wanted but when i did my gauge swatch this was around the time that i like really figured out like oh i'm a tight knitter this pattern is supposed to be knit on four millimeter needles so having figured this out about myself i actually gauge swatched at um a four and a half millimeter needle which worked out perfectly it gave me gave me a good gauge um actually my stitch count was perfect my row gauge was still small a little bit not a ton but i figured that um this this cardigan is a very long cardigan and i feel like just like under the weight of itself that will probably make up for the row gauge this is what i'm thinking um and at least so far when i try it on like i haven't been having any issues with like the shoulder area like i figured if this gauge was going to get me in trouble anywhere it was going to be at the shoulders right that like the armholes would be too small but I tried it on and that hasn't been a problem at all. So I think that it's fine there. My gauge was good, but here's the thing. <laughs> I gauge swatched for this, again, a couple months before I actually started working on it. And so by the time I went to cast on, I could not remember which needle size I had swatched on for sure. And I thought, well, I'm pretty diligent with my Ravelry and I didn't make a note that I had swatched at a particular needle size. So surely that must mean that I just followed the pattern's recommended needle size, right? That would make sense, right? <laughs> it would make sense. It was not true. It, was me it wasn't a ton of knitting, it was maybe a couple hours of knitting, but when I started the stock and neck, it very quickly became apparent that this was the wrong gauge. That in fact, I had swatched on a four and a half millimeter needle. And I had in fact just not written it down. And I had in fact, screwed myself over in this way so back we went we started again which was also interesting because the the sweater just starts in a way that was <laughs> unexpected to me um I mean I, I don't have a ton of knitting experience right I've only been knitting for a couple years and it was just a construction that I never encountered before I had to learn the um Judy's Magic cast on it was my first time doing that and then it just it was just just not what I expected it to be like you basically knit like here and then you knit here and then you pick up here to do your to start your stockinette 
and it was just strange. So it was funny because the second time I did it, it made a lot more sense now that I understood what was going on. But I'm quite pleased with how this sweater is coming along. So I cast this on about two weeks ago. Um, today's a Saturday, I cast it on on a Friday. So just over two weeks. Um, and I have, I finished the raglan, I split for sleeves and I got this much of one sleeve. Um, I kind of figured I would start for sleeves both well, actually for several reasons. So one, just, just to get them over with, I feel like like sleeves are, well, normally sleeves are not my favorite part. I don't love a small circumference, but because this is a cardigan, the sleeves are knit in the round, but the body is not. And you know, like I think a lot of people, I much prefer knitting in the round. So it was kind of like, oh, I can knit in the round after doing all this knitting flat. Let's take a break from the flat knitting. So there was that. And there's also the fact that, um, I do want this to be really long. I think I have plenty of yarn, but then again, I often think that, and then I end up having to order more yarn. So my thinking is I can do the sleeves, get them to the length I want them to be, and then I can just kind of not worry about rationing my yarn, making sure I have the right amount of yarn. Like I can just knit the body until I run out of yarn or until it hits the floor, whichever comes first. Um, so um, I thought I would get that done. Um, it does mean that I have a lot of <laughs> Yarn tail is coming out of this garment right now because um, I have two balls connected to the sleeve and two balls still connected to the body, um, but it's looking pretty good. So I just tried <laughs> to put this on and I actually cannot the way that I currently have it. So I stopped for reasons unknown. I stopped knitting the body like in the middle of this row. So it means that like the break in my string is in the middle of the back rather than being, you know, at the front, which would allow me to try it on. But let's see if we can like visualize. So we've got like, we're like almost to the elbow. I mean, we'll see when I actually have it on, it might be a little different, but so we're there. We're like just at the underarm. And yeah, I feel like it's coming along pretty well. Again, it feels a little bit slow just because it is a DK weight, which I'm still kind of like getting used to knitting at. Um, so it just feels a little bit slower, but it does mean, again, I think it's gonna be a much more um, wearable weight. Okay, so it's been almost exactly four weeks. I do have progress to show you on the cardigan that I was working on last time, and I actually made sure to stop it in a point this time where I would be able to try it on properly. We're learning, you see? See, there's a lot more going on in the sleeve department than we had last time. Okay, let's see if I can get this thing on with the many, many balls of wool attached to it. Okay, so we're really leaning into the sweater vibe today. Okay, actually this brings up a dilemma that I would like to discuss with you. So when you're working with a ball of yarn, how do you decide which end to pull from? Because just when I think I've got it figured out, I've got a method, I know which one makes more sense in which scenarios, a scenario proves me wrong every time. So in this case, especially with this mohair, big finger quotes, um, I was thinking this is a ginormous ball. So I feel like if I try to pull from the outside, then it's like, it's there's just gonna be so many opportunities for it to roll around and get tangled over the course of like the life of this belt. Like it's just gonna be a bad time. And so I was like, I'll pull it from the middle, but then because it's so big, like it starts collapsing on itself to the point of like being loose and hard to work with and easily tangled so early in the lifespan of the ball. And so I've ended up, so this one, this one I kind of started this one and it was too late and I haven't done anything with the X, it's not terrible, but like the other one, that I have attached, like one is one sleeve, one's the other sleeve. This other one, I had to like take out my ball winder and start rewinding because it was just unmanageable. And I don't know, and because also part of my consideration was that if I'm working with two yarns held together, I should be center pulling, right? Because then the balls aren't like rolling all over the place and like tangling with each other. And I just, there's no good way is what I've learned. There's no good way. I haven't really, hello, Cropper's made an appearance. Hey. You've had all your breakfast. You're not starving. So since I decided to wind this up, it hasn't been an issue rolling all around. Um, but I don't know. I'm not convinced that it won't be. I don't know. Is there a good answer? Is there just never a good answer? Do you just always have to try one and then when it doesn't work, you do the other? I don't know. Let me know if you have wisdom. I think last time I had like a little bit of the body below where you split for sleeves, but I have definitely done a little bit more of that now. Um, and I have, I'm almost done sleeves. I have one finished sleeve to that, beautiful. And I have one sleeve that I am ready to start the ripping. I've done all of the decreases, all of the length of the sleeve, so almost there. So we have our ribbed cuff all done on this one. And on this one, you can see we're very close. And as far as the length of it, 
I mean, we're like firmly past the territory of like 2005 shrug, um, but we're still a very, very long way away from the floor length cardigan <laughs> that this will be. So I'm going to be knitting this until the end of time. Because if we want to recap last time, last time I think in terms of body, I think we were maybe like here and I had maybe like this much of this sleeve and none of the other sleeves. So it's been four weeks. I've knit like this much sleeve and then this much sleeve. And I just feel like when we factor that against like the fact that this cardigan currently ends here and needs to get like four feet longer, <laughs> I, I just foresee this sweater and I being in like a very long-term relationship, so wish me luck. But it's gonna be kind of interesting to see how it goes once I finish this sleeve, because up to this point, I've kind of been able to just decide when I'm sitting down to work on this, whether I want to work in the round, but it's gonna have to be on a tighter circumference because it's the sleeve, but at least I can work in the round, or do I want to be able to do nice, really long rows and not have to worry about, you know, either adjusting my magic loop or flipping something over very frequently, but I have to alternate rows of knitting and purling because it's knit flat. So like neither option is like my ideal knitting. Like I just would love to just knit stock knit in the round for days and days. So neither is quite perfect, but both are good for kind of different things. Like I've been finding that when I want to take this with me, if I'm going to go like visit with somebody, I would much rather be knitting long rows of the body because I just don't have to worry about meddling with it so often. But at home, I tend to prefer working on the sleeves. So it'll be interesting to see if it slows down my pace maybe once I no longer have that option to kind of choose which way I wanna work on it at any given time. So we'll see, but I really wanted to get the sleeves done so that it was just kind of like straight sailing from there. Minus that I will have to do um, the pockets, though so the pockets are their afterthought pockets, so technically it could be like the very last step that I do, but I also don't think I want to do that. I think that once I get to the point where the pockets go in, I think I will probably do them pretty quickly after that, so that then again, it's just smooth sailing from there. Okay, I, I have to jump in here because <laughs> the number of times that in these project updates, I talk about how I'm totally going to do these afterthought pockets as more of a mid-thought pocket, which absolutely did not end up happening. Let's, we, we might as well start counting. Let's go start the count. And when this cardigan finally reaches its full length, I can just bind off and be done and not be like, oh, I have to like learn how to do pockets now. I don't really want to do it that way. I, I really don't like all of the sort of like finishy, constructy parts of making garments. And I feel like if I do the pockets kind of in the middle, it'll feel more like it's just the process of knitting it. But if I wait until the end, I think it's just going to feel similar to like having to seam up like a seamed sweater when I'm done, which I despise. So <laughs> in the interest of making this, um, you know, fun, because like allegedly this is a hobby that I like. Um, yeah, I'm planning to do the pockets in the middle and hope that that helps. We have the cardigan, which there's there's a lot of stuff going on here. Ta-da! We have two cuffs. We have two finished sleeves. So that's exciting. And again, I was my most responsible knitting podcaster self and I did put in a stitch marker. That means that everything since that is new in the last couple weeks. So considering that this is a DK weight and considering that I'm knitting this flat, I'm pretty happy with the amount of progress on that in the last couple weeks. It's like, what is that? Like eight inches maybe? I don't know, we're gonna say it's eight inches, but like, so if we say it's eight inches, it's like almost a foot. I mean, we're being very generous now in our rounding, but by that logic, no, I mean, by that logic, this sweater's still gonna take me an eternity, but it is gonna get done eventually. And I feel like that's, that's like an encouraging amount of progress. I will take it. I also had a couple of spots in the body of the sweater that I actually paused while I was knitting to take out my phone and record some footage because I was like, there's a possibility that this is going to go very wrong. <laughs> And if I'm going to ruin this project, I would like to at least get content out of it. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the situation was that I had been knitting this out somewhere. Maybe I was visiting Grams of Poppy and I made a mistake. There was a stitch that was looking kind of funky. Maybe I had like split it or something where normally I would have dropped down to get that stitch and use my crochet hook to fix it. But I didn't bring my crochet hook with me and I didn't want to stop being able to knit it. So I was like, that's okay. I'll just keep knitting 
it's not like I'm gonna get that many rows in while I'm here. And when I get home, I'll get my crochet hook and I'll just go down those extra few rows and I'll fix it from there. Um, which, you know, I think that was sound, except that I promptly forgot that I had done that and knit like many, many more inches <laughs> of the body. So by the time I realized this, it was like a really big rescue operation, but I was looking at it and I was like, I don't know, like, am I, am I going to be mad if I don't try to fix this? And I end up not liking how this looked when I could have tried to fix it. And worst case scenario, if it went wrong, like, yes, I may have to re-knit several inches, which sounds like a lot right now. But once I've knit this all the way to the floor, which is, is intended to be like an ankle length cardigan, I think I might have regrets if I don't try to fix this while I can. Like, again, it's still a big endeavor if I end up having to frog it. But am I going to be mad if I don't? So I'm just going to, I'm just going to show you what happened. All the way down here, I have this stitch that you can even kind of see it from a distance. Like something weird happened here. I feel like it's actually more noticeable in person than it's coming through on camera. It's enough that it's like bugging me. And the problem is also, I think because I think I kind of like partially went into it. Like I think that, I think that I have to fix probably not just that one stitch, but like the two on either side of it, like the one on either side, two in total. So I think I have to do like three stitches worth of going all the way down for it, which like, what are the odds that this actually makes it worse rather than better? Like not zero, right? So I'm like, do I do it? But then, so just now, like I already think I'm going to have to put in a lifeline because a weird thing happened where I was getting a weird like hole in between two of my stitches. And I was like, what's happening? And I thought it was just like a weird thing where I could drop it down and pull back up. But when I did that, I found that somehow I ended up with this loop at the back. And like, instead of the ladder straight across, I have a loop and I pulled down a few more rows and the loop just got bigger. So I don't know why there's a loop. I'm thinking, well, if I'm already potentially going to have to put in a lifeline, like maybe this is when I try to go back and fix the one that's all the way down here. Because like, oh my God, that's like half the cardigan. I don't want to have to go all the way back down there. It's like hours, hours and hours. Is this a terrible idea? Would you do this? Yes, first I should make sure that I can't fix it just by like pulling to even out some tension a little, right? That would be a smart thing to do. Is it fine? No, okay, I think I will just fill it in when I weave in ends and just try to kind of pull it into like a V shape that kind of covers it. Hopefully, hopefully that's fine. Hopefully I don't regret this. Famous last words, right? So as you can see, we ended up deciding against doing any major surgery and I'm trying to look at this now to see if I can figure out where that was. If I can't even find it, I think that'll prove that I made the right decision. Okay, I think I found one of them, but I had to like really look. So I'm taking that as a good sign. It's like in here, you see, but like, I don't know. I, I think it's looking okay right now and it hasn't been blocked yet. So I'm hopeful that if I can barely notice it now, that I will definitely not be able to notice it once it's blocked. Um, and even if I can, worst case scenario, at least it's on the back. Like, I think I just concluded that it was too high risk to try to fix it and that it wasn't a problem commensurate to the level of risk that would have been required to repair it. You know, we are doing like high level risk assessment over here and this did not meet the criteria. So I think it's gonna be good. I also would just like to take a moment to complain about the fact that I swear no matter how hard I try to very carefully pick up stitches when I'm doing sleeves and I will very happily pick up more stitches at an armhole than I'm instructed to, and then just decrease them in the next round to make sure that I get the best possible coverage of the underarm hole. So tell me why there are still holes on either side of my armhole. Like, look, there's like a little stingray face down here. Like, look, there's eyes on that. There must be like a particular part of like the anatomy of the stitches that like go around the corners that I haven't realized that I should be picking up. I think actually, I think the other one turned out slightly better because Second time, I was like, I'm gonna get it this time. I was mad. And there are less blatant holes in it, but it also just looks a little like strained. And I don't know, maybe this is a thing that there's not like a great solution for because I swear, even when I see like the pattern photos, like the like marketing imagery for a pattern, 
if you look closely in ones where you can see the underarm, there are holes there. And I'm like, is this a thing that like exclusively I care about? Also, the sleeve that I was finishing last time was the absolute most annoying thing. Not because of anything wrong with the pattern or me knitting the ribbing, none of that. Um, specifically just the fact that I believe that I was one row away from the end when my ball of yarn ran out. And I was like, like the entire time I was knitting this sleeve, I felt like I was playing yarn chicken. And like, I wasn't really because I had more of the yarn. I just really don't like joining a new ball of yarn, but I was just really, really hoping that I would be able to squeak out the end of the sleeve with just what was left on that one ball. It was so close. Okay, I guess I should actually show you what this looks like on so we can check out what the length is like. Okay, <gasps> I feel like it's starting to look like a sweater. Okay, let's stand up. Ooh, it's actually, it's like the same length or a little bit longer than my like cropped t-shirt. You know, dare I say, if this were just a normal cardigan, it would basically be time to add the ribbing and bind off, which I mean, it's not gonna be the case on this one because this is going to go like to the floor. But just thinking about the fact that if this was a regular cardigan, I would be almost done. Makes me feel a little bit more accomplished actually. Like I have knit a sweater, you know, like in the time I've been working on this, a sweater did occur just not the length one that I want. And that's why I will continue to knit this forever. But in the meantime, I did like knit a sweater kind of technically. So let me see if I can, oh God, here it is. And we can see down here, this is my stitch marker from the last time that I showed this on camera. So we've got another few inches. So not a ton, I was mostly focusing on dad socks. Um, I just did a little bit before I left. And since I've gotten home, I think honestly, most of this I did yesterday. I think I was about here when I started working on this yesterday, but I worked on this for like a lot of yesterday. <laughs> so last time I tried it on and felt like, okay, this is where if this were a regular spider, I would be starting the ribbing. It would be like almost done. So let me try this on and we can see. Okay. We have like a sweater, like, yeah, if this were a regular sweater, this would be done. This would even maybe be long. We're, I guess, close to where the pockets will go. Um, I do believe the pockets are afterthought pockets, but I will probably do them as a mid-project thought rather than an afterthought just to get them over with. Um, so once I'm done the pockets, it'll just be like, keep knitting until the ankles, except that um, I am thinking that I probably will want to do again, like a mid-project block, just to make sure that the length is coming out the way that I think it is, because I don't, there's just like a lot of potential for gravity to be a thing on this project. There's just, there's a lot of fabric that could weigh itself down. So I think it's going to be important to check that before I bind off and maybe find that the sweater is like a foot longer than I want it to be and I'm walking on it. That would be unfortunate. So I do think that will be important, but I'm feeling like it's probably about halfway there which is good and I hope is accurate because I think I have just finished half of my balls of yarn of the merino. If I'm not halfway done, we might have a problem, <laughs> but fingers crossed. So I'm looking forward to it being complete, um, but I think forward is really the operative word there <laughs> because we're looking very, very forward, very far. Like I, <laughs> it has taken me almost three months to get this far. So if I'm hopefully halfway done, we're looking at another three months probably. I do also wanna circle back though on some things that I mentioned about this in my last project update. So last time I mentioned that I had this weird issue where I found like a strange loop that I couldn't figure out how to resolve. So last time I showed this problem, I had three separate people. I had Pollock, Amanda, and JS each commented saying, I think what you have is an accidental short row. It looks like most likely you were knitting a row, put it down mid row, came back to it and accidentally picked up from the wrong side. So instead of having knit along your row, paused, picked it up and continued knitting along your row, you had knit along your row, picked it up accidentally from the wrong side and knit back this way. And that's what creates that little loop. And this makes so much sense. Like I, this, this is something that I am typically diligent about. I don't usually have this issue. I usually pick it up and say, okay, which side is my working yarn on? Where is it coming from? Where does it need to go? Great. But I can very much see how in the course of the hundreds of rows that make up this cardigan, I can see how one time <laughs> I would maybe not have been paying attention and picked it up the wrong way. So this makes perfect sense, gives me further incentive to look out for this in the future. And just like, this was such a mystery to me. So thank you so much to the three of you for explaining this to me because I never would have figured this out. 
I, w I had no idea. I was so perplexed by it. So if you also were perplexed by it, now you know. So unfortunately, I also learned by learning this that the only way to actually fix that is in fact to frog back. There is no way to like pick it up in a way that's going to solve the issue because a weird thing happened. You just do have to rip back if you actually want to resolve it. But I decided not to. I decided to just kind of like pull on the stitches on either side to even out a bit. I also had asked in that video when I, when I didn't know what the problem was, but I was like, is this worth ripping back and frogging? And the consensus very much seemed to be absolutely do not go back. That will block out just fine. Don't worry about it. So thank you for reassuring me about that. I feel like it's the right decision. I feel validated in that. I had also asked in that video about the underarm issue. There is a consensus. So four separate people, Suli, Amanda, Jillian, and Camilla all said Roxanne Richardson. So I have not yet watched that video. I'm planning on just doing that the next time I need to pick up for a sleeve on a new project. But just so you know, if you are also having this problem, Roxanne Richardson seems to be the place to go. My no frills cardigan is um, a long-term project. However, we are starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel. I cast this on January 5th. We've now spent January, February, March on it. And honestly, I think I'm ahead of where I thought I would be at this point. I kind of figured this project was gonna take me like six months, but I am definitely beyond halfway and um, good thing because I'm definitely more than halfway done my yarn. And the fabric is a little bit different than it was the last time that I talked about it on the channel because I've done my mid project block. This is fresh off the blocking mat. Today is Sunday that I'm recording this. On Friday night, I decided, okay, I think it's time. Took my measurement. I measured from the top of the back of the neck, just below where the ribbing starts all the way down to the bottom. And as of Friday, I had 33 inches there. And as of today, blocked, I have 34 inches there, which is interesting to me. I decided to do a mid-project block because over the course of a cardigan this long, there's a lot of room for even the slightest bit of growth in blocking to really compound over the length of this. And I'm like, there's a chance that this could add like six inches here. I don't know. I don't really know what I'm expecting. But I realized when I measured it, but I was expecting more than that. But knowing that it's almost one to one, like I'm not even going to be knitting another 33 inches. I don't need that much more length, even close. Whatever I knit from here is not going to grow by more than an inch. So it should be fairly simple from here to get it to the right length. Now, hmm, knock on wood, <laughs> because that just seems like a dangerous thing to say. And there is also the factor of just when I wear it a few times, how much is it going to start to sort of sag and pull itself down under its own weight? So I do feel like there is kind of a degree to which I still need to be cautious about the length. And I'm also wondering if similar to doing a mid-project block, if I need to do kind of like a mid-project, like multi-day wear <laughs> test, like just wear it around unfinished around the house for a few days, just to give it a chance to kind of like settle under its own weight a little bit. Maybe what I need to do, I've been talking about doing the afterthought pockets that are written into the pattern as sort of a mid-thought, like not leaving them all the way to the end. So maybe what I should do is go ahead and make those pockets so that then I can put the attached yarn balls in the pocket so they have little containers <laughs> so that I can then more easily wear this project around for a few days. Is that a weird thing to do? I feel like that might be a smart thing to do. So last time that I showed this on the channel, where's my stitch marker? Okay, I put on this marker of where we were. And as you can see, quite a bit has happened since then because this is the main thing that I've been knitting on. Let's see where it is now. This also kind of matches my outfit in a weird way. Okay, that is a pretty long cardigan. Now, I was a little concerned and might, might be true that the sleeves were kind of the perfect length before I blocked them, which in retrospect, kind of dangerous because if I thought the rest of this was gonna grow, what? did I think was going to happen to the sleeves? What a great question. However, sometimes I find that sleeves kind of shrink as you wear a sweater. Maybe we'll see if I do my mid-project wear test, how these feel, if they do kind of seem to shorten. And if not, then I might have to undo my beautiful tubular bind off and rip out a little and then do it again. Why? 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 Why do I do the bind off before I block? So this is where we get into, did I order the right amount of yarn? Like maybe 15 more inches? Is that true? It's very hard to do this without like leaning and messing up my measurements. I don't know, around a foot, maybe a little more than a foot, I think is what I need from here. So 
let's let's do some measuring okay so we can actually measure because i have not woven in the ends we can measure how much length i got out of one ball on the most recent switch so okay so i'm holding this upside down we can see here is where the most recent complete ball started and then it ended over on this side here can you see that that strand coming out there okay so it looks like i'm getting about eight inches per ball um, like I said, I think we need probably between 12 and 15 inches to finish it, plus a little bit extra for pockets. So in terms of the yarn that we still have available, these are the balls that I'm currently knitting off of. Like this merino is relatively new. I've kind of used just enough to take like the really pretty looking layer of wraps off of it. So now it's revealed like the crisscrossiness. And this is about half or more of the mohair alpaca because these balls are giant. They are almost twice as much length as these are. So if we're going to be like on the safe side, we'll say that I have half each left of these. Oh, oh, good news. Okay, actually, <laughs> maybe too good of news. Maybe, maybe so good that it's bad because I have three entire balls left. So is this the first time in my entire knitting career that I have like an active surplus of yarn? <laughs> I've had projects where it worked out that I had enough. I've had a lot of projects where I ended up having to buy more yarn, probably as a byproduct of being a tight knitter. More stitches, same amount of space. So interesting. By these calculations, um, there's a solid chance that I'm going to end up with possibly two entire balls of yarn left or more likely probably like one and like 90% of one by the time I get the pockets done. Um, we'll see, but I might have some yarn I need to figure out what to do with when I'm done. So that's, I mean, not ideal that I paid more money than I need to probably for this project, but am I proud of myself for actually ordering sufficient quantities of yarn? Yes, yes I am. Oh God, in terms of, in terms of the Touch Me mohair, um, or set because re remember these are basically twice as long as the other ones so this basically equates to six of the merinos plus the half we got left and i did know that i was pretty confident i was ordering a really excessive amount of this but when i got it it was half off and i was concerned that they were discontinuing it and i was like in no world am i getting 80 percent done this cardigan and then running out of mohair and not being able to finish the cardigan with a matching mohair because it's now discontinued. This was not an option. So because these were half price, they were so like relatively affordable that I was like, we're just gonna order like definitely enough. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, I found a fourth. Extremely safe. I, I think that I only ordered eight of these in the first place, which means that so far I've only used three and a half of these on this entire cardigan, <laughs> so. These go a very, 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 very long way. In terms of the merino, I started out with 10 of these. So that means that I've now used about six and a half. I also, in an earlier episode where I was talking about this cardigan, I mentioned having issues <laughs> trying to figure out like how to pull the yarn, like the dilemma of, is this a project where I should pull from the outside or the inside? And how much is that informed by which type of yarn it is? And I tend to default to pulling from the inside because you don't have to worry about the ball like rolling around. And I was having a lot of issues with that with this project, but I did decide to try just pulling from the outside for both of them, which I was trying to avoid initially thinking, well, if I have two balls, they're just gonna be like bouncing all over each other and getting all tangled. Somehow this actually has not been an issue at all. And I've much preferred working on this since I started pulling from the outside. So it doesn't really make sense to me, but it is working. So we're going to go with it. So that's really all the update that I've got today on that cardigan. And maybe next time it will have pockets. I am of course still working <laughs> on the no frills cardigan that, um, I mean, looked like it was going to take my entire life, but you know what? I actually feel like we are nearing the end, which is really exciting because I'm actually going to get to wear this soon, I think. So like I said, this is very much a long-term project. I cast this on January 5th, which means that we're a solid four months into this, but I thought this would take me at least six months and we are like rapidly approaching completion. So let me show you the progress. Okay. I've actually got two stitch markers on this one right now. So this stitch marker down here, that's where I was the last time that I showed this project on camera. It's actually been four weeks since I recorded. So I've gotten from here to here. And then this is marking a separate point that we'll talk about in a minute. I was thinking that there is still the possibility of it growing vertically just through hanging just from wear. So in that video, I said something about like, should I just like wear it like unfinished for a few days, just like around the house? Um, and then I realized there's like probably a smart way to do this. So what I actually did was I just hung it off of the back of like a bar stool and I'll pop in a picture. I kind of had a pillow propped up over the top of the chair so that the weight of the shoulder wasn't 
you know, resting on this like very thin edge of the chair and putting therefore like a lot of pressure on this like one very specific line. It sort of could like spread out across the pillow in a similar way that it gets spread out over like the entire depth of your shoulder. So I set it up like that and was sort of letting it hang for a few days just to kind of see if it kind of got longer. But I haven't yet actually done the comparative measurement to know, but that is the purpose of the stitch marker. This is where I had gotten to when I did that hang test. And so this last little inch is like what I have knit since then. But so I just wanted to be able to know what is the point that I need to measure to when I'm checking how much it's grown by. So I'll report back in the next video on how much the hanging actually had an impact because at this moment, I don't really know. And I realized like I could measure it on camera right now, but I have the problem where um, my measurement of what it was before is stored in the camera roll on my phone, <laughs> which I'm recording on and I don't want to touch the phone and move it. So. We're just, we're just gonna do it next time. One thing though that I did think was really interesting when I was doing this hang test is that like I would be across the room and I would look over at it and I could see a very clear line where the project was at the point that I blocked it. Like the difference between the blocked fabric and the fabric that I had knit since blocking, therefore new unblocked fabric, was noticeable. There's a very clear delineation. You can, you can see it in this picture, I think. And I'm not worried about that. I'm confident that that line will block out once the whole thing gets blocked. I don't think you'll be able to tell, but it was just really funny because I didn't really feel like the fabric seemed very different post-blocking. You know, I think it's more obvious in some yarns and in some projects than in others. And this would have been one where I would have told you like, I don't know if it did much, but having that like direct side-by-side -side comparison was like, oh, it really, it really did do something because these two are very much not the same and you can see it from like 20 feet away. I also have said every single time I've talked about this that this pattern has afterthought pockets, but that I think I'll probably do them as like more of a mid project thought, blah, 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 so I'm not stuck doing it at the end. Well, surprise, surprise, I still haven't done them. And as you will see in a minute when I try this on, I'm almost done this sweater. <laughs> so I think that they probably will after all be afterthought pockets despite all my best intentions. <laughs> but I think that it's just happened that like I've just had like a busy last few weekends and I think that I really just want, I really just want to do the pockets on a day where like I just have a day where I can just uninterrupted like that's my mission for the day and just get them done and not be worried about trying to fit it in or having to put it down in the middle of things and go do something else. Like I just want to be able to sit down and focus because I know that there's going to be parts of it that I find tricky or just like unpleasant and like require a lot of focus and I just don't want to be trying to do all that in and around other stuff and I just haven't had a good weekend for that in the last few weeks so it's 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 gonna be actual afterthought pockets I think is what's happening at this point <laughs> am I going to be a little bit annoyed when I bind off on the whole body and I'm not done and now have to do pockets figure out how to do afterthought pockets because I've never done those like yeah that's not that's not gonna be my favorite part of the project it's not but c'est la vie Okay, so now it is time to try this thing on and see how close we are to completion. Oh my god, there's so, there's so many just like ends of balls of yarn now because I have not yet woven any of them in and it's just, it's just kind of a disaster. Bear with me. Oh, my head's like slightly out of frame here. Not ideal. So, that's a lot of cardigan. It's a lot more cardigan than it was the last time I showed it when at that time it seemed like a lot of cardigan. And yet, like, there's still a lot of cardigan left to knit. How is this possible? I feel like the distance between my knee and the floor keeps growing. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. So, you know what? Maybe I will manage to put in the pockets before I get to the actual bottom of this. Maybe not. Time will tell. But that's a lot of cardigan. That's so much cardigan. Look at that. This is going to be a really short update because um, basically all that's happened is I'm just still knitting a really long cardigan <laughs> and it doesn't look a whole lot different from the last time that you saw it. And, okay, there's not like, there's not a whole lot to tell you on this. Like I, it's just, I'm just still knitting stockinette. Let me find my progress keeper. So this, there's two stitch markers here. This top one is where I was the last time that I filmed. So it's been two weeks. I've done a little bit. Haven't done a lot. Well, so it takes forever to do a row on this and half of it's purling. So it just, it takes how long it takes. But I feel like last time I tried this on, it still needed 
quite a bit more than this for it to be ready to start like getting ready to bind off so we're just still still carrying on we're just we're just still knitting i also still need to knit pockets every single time i record i'm like maybe next time i'll have done the pockets i still have not done the pockets i'm just like really avoiding having to do the part where i like measure out where the pockets need to start i just don't think i will enjoy that so i'm avoiding it for now let me try this on can i get all of me in frame so very long not long enough we've still got to knit more <laughs> i just i feel like somehow the bottom little bit of this cardigan is like taking longer than the entire like top 80% of the cardigan. I don't know. It just feels like I'm never getting any closer to done. Someday, someday, I will appear on the channel and show you this finished cardigan. But that day is not today. Look how cute it is though. Like if we look at it from the front, I like straighten out, straighten out the button band, which I'm hoping that when this is done and not on the needles, that this will be better at sitting flat. It kind of has a tendency to like end up with the band tucked in like that, which like I don't love, so. Hopefully that kind of like figures itself out. I'm still not sure if I'm gonna decide that these sleeves are too long. I think I will probably just wear it for a while and see how much it bugs me. Because like if I let them fully fall, like they do entirely cover my thumb right now. Um, and I do love a long sleeve, but that might be slightly too long. I should not have bound off the sleeve before I blocked it. That was a mistake, but maybe it'll be fine. Cut to me like three months from now being like it was not fun i have to go fix this now <laughs> but what can you do look at it though isn't it like so beautiful it's also a very nice like mid-weight fabric like i could totally see myself wearing this on like a summer evening or even just like <laughs> i was gonna say taking it along in the summer when you think you might be going somewhere with like cold air conditioning and then i remember this is the largest sweater of life so it's probably not really going to be my like purse sweater It'll, it'll have a purpose. It will. Mostly just being stunning. Like, look at it. Look at it in this color. Like, I just love the idea of having this giant statement sweater in this really fun color. I actually have an update for you today that is something other than I knit a few more inches. <laughs> the other day, I was like, I should probably check the pattern just to see exactly how long the ribbing is at the bottom so that I know how much short of the total final length that I want it to be. I need to stop doing stockinette and switch to ribbing, right? Makes sense. So I did that and was shocked to find <laughs> that there's supposed to be three and a half inches of ribbing at the bottom, which I don't know, is just a lot more ribbing than I was assuming in my head that there would be. I think maybe I just thought that it would be like the same as the button band, that it would just be like about an inch. But in fact, it's not matching that, it's matching what's on the sleeve, which is three and a half inches. And I mean, you know, that makes sense. I just, I just wasn't thinking about that. So when I then tried it on to try to figure out, okay, how much further do I have to knit until I start my three and a half inches of ribbing? I went, oh, oh, that might be too much. <laughs> I might actually have knit this too far. And so I, I think that if when that happened, I had actually just at that moment started knitting ribbing, it might have been fine. It might have turned out to be the perfect length but it might have also over time gotten too long. And I just don't know. I just don't know how much this is going to grow over time just from the sagging under its own weight. And I really don't want to have spent six months on this cardigan to end up with a cardigan that is unwearable until I pick off the edge and rip inches off of it and re-knit ripping. And I just, I just don't want to do that. And I was feeling like, you know what? I actually quite like the length that it's at right now plus maybe a tiny bit more but what that means is that i actually had to rip back two inches of my cardigan which like i just it, that's just so many hours so many hours going into two inches on this knit flat stockinette cardigan so you know that was that was a little sad and i spent like an hour trying to like pick up all the right legs of all the right stitches to like put in my lifeline and rip back and so I got it all sorted out, it's all done now. And we actually have the very beginnings of some ribbing. That's the very start of the ribbed edge. There's like a few, a few rows of ribbed stitches. So that's exciting. I'm actually like on the bottom part now. I'm not just knitting stockinette into infinity anymore. We've actually progressed. So 
that's exciting. And I've also measured out where my pockets are going to be. So I haven't actually done any of the knitting on the pockets, but I was looking at the pattern to see where it recommends you position the pockets. And I, I don't know, I tried, so I tried marking out where the pattern suggests that the pockets go in terms of height. And I felt like a T-Rex imagining putting my arms in those pockets. Like it felt like they were like in my armpit. And I was like, I don't think this is going to cut it for me. So I ended up kind of figuring out, okay, where do I feel like they should actually be height wise? And it was twice as far down from the armhole <laughs> as the pattern recommends. I'm like, that seems like a lot, like maybe, like maybe that's too dramatic of a change to make. Like maybe I'm just like gauging something wrong. I should check this against like another sweater that I have to make sure that this makes sense. But in fact, when I just pulled out the like store-bought long cardigan that I have with pockets, its pockets are basically exactly where I positioned the pockets on this cardigan. So I, do, I must just have way longer arms than petite knit. I mean, she is, I think, like a petite person. So I guess that tracks, but like twice as long? I don't know. <laughs> that seems like a lot, but I, I think that's where my pockets need to go. All right, so let's do a try on, shall we? Okay, so it turns out that I actually stopped this in the middle of a row, which means that I can't try it on until I finish knitting this row. One of the nice things about this pattern is that the button band is knit simultaneously. So now that I'm almost done, I am not about to have to pick up 3,000 stitches <laughs> around the perimeter, which I'm very, very happy about because I don't like picking up stitches in general. Um, and <laughs> I really don't think I would cope well with having to pick up, you know, from the very bottom edge all the way up around the neck and then all the way back down a cardigan that goes to the floor. Today is June 1st, which means that we are five entire months in. Now, I was kind of thinking about a month ago, oh, I think I'm like about a month away from finishing and here we are and I'm I'm not finished. I'm on the ribbing, but I still have the pockets to do and like ribbing, ribbing takes longer than just stocking it. So I don't know, it's very possible that this will end up taking me the rest of the month to finish. I hope not though. It would be nice if I could finish this a little bit sooner, but the pockets, I don't know. It just, there's something scary about afterthought pockets and I say something as if it's vague. It's 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 not vague. The scary part is that you snip the yarn. The scary part is that you cut your knitting and you unpick part of a row. And I mean, as someone who has never done steaking or anything like that, I don't know. The idea of cutting, like I guess I've cut to do surgery before, which and like that is a bit stressful, but I I don't know. This is just, this is extra. And I guess part of, part of the thing is that with surgery, you typically you like put in a lifeline and so it's fine. And I don't know, just the idea of cutting into these pockets is stressful. I do, I do. Can I get all of it in frame? Okay, I actually have to tip the camera to get it all in. Okay, here we go. So part of what I was finding when I was trying it on before to measure is that just the way that it sits, the front edge tends to kind of sit a bit lower than the back edge. It just kind of naturally droops that way, which makes sense, but also means I can't just base the length off of where the back of it hits. So that's really why I decided to rip back because I was getting worried that the front corners were going to start dragging and then they would get all like ratty and start unraveling and it would be a really bad time. So I decided it was time to start ribbing and I feel like this is a good spot. So I mean, I've only got like maybe a quarter inch of ribbing at this point. So I basically have three to three and a quarter inches of ribbing left to add. So I think that once that's there, I think this is going to be the perfect length. I'm very excited. I also, so I've marked out my pocket positioning with these little stitch markers. This is the front edge and the back edge of the pocket. And this is the top edge. So this will be the opening. And then the pocket is supposed to be about six inches deep. So if I put my hand in there, I've still got kind of a natural bend to my arm. It's not like I'm fully extending to reach down in there. And I feel like that's a comfortable spot. Like when I measured out where the pattern was saying to put them, it was literally like here. And like, I, I just don't feel like I really want a pocket there. I, I don't know. I don't know if this is just a difference in preferred pocket placement or if it's actually like that significant of a difference in just like body proportion. Because to me, I'm like, I, I feel, I feel like a T-Rex right now. Like I don't, I don't want to be going in a pocket like that. I don't want to feel like I'm like flexing my back muscles. 
to like reach into my pocket. So I think that will be a much more comfortable height. So fingers, I mean, fingers crossed that is true because this is the other scary part about afterthought pockets. Like I'm making a cut. Like I, I really need to be pretty confident about where those pockets go. So I do think though that like with the bend in my arm, that's still there when I put my hand in a pocket here, like even if it ends up sagging down several inches, like I can still reach that without like, you know, reaching. So I think, I think that's the right spot. I hope that's the right spot. We're going to go on the assumption that it's the right spot. So yeah, that is my no frills cardigan. So do I have a finished no frill cardigan to show you? No. And here's, <laughs> we were so close. Where, where are we with this cardigan? We are at should be done. <laughs> we are at, um, I did the pockets. There's a pocket. I knit all the length. I knit three inches of ribbing. And then I decided to block before casting off because I just do not wish to spend the probably several hours that doing a sew and bind off is going to take me to do and then find out that it's too long. Boy, am I glad I did that. <laughs> Because guess what? It's too long. I mean, so cur currently it's not. Currently, I'll try it on in a second to show you, but currently it's probably like an inch off the ground at the front because just the way it kind of sits on the body and like it makes sense because the front panels aren't like holding on to the other side to keep it up. Those front corners kind of droop. So those front corners are about an inch off the ground. And I just feel like that just seems really close to assume that over time, like some stretch in this garment isn't gonna, like even if I just like put something in the pocket, it basically hits the ground. So I think I need to remove length. Now the question is at this point, I have a few different options of how I think that I could do that, that I need to kind of think through. But before I do that, let's try this on and talk about it. So just like, on its own for its own sake i love that i think that looks fantastic but you know what i don't think will look fantastic is frayed edges on my cardigan that make it start to unravel so i think that part of what happened is that i think the pockets are adding a not insubstantial amount of weight that is kind of pulling them down more than anticipated because I, I did like quite a lot of like testing to try to prevent this problem right so I, I think when it was about here I blocked it I also tested just hanging this off of the back of a chair for a few days to try to give it a chance for like gravity to settle in all of these tests led me to believe that I didn't have a whole lot to worry about so I kept knitting and knit until I knit too long and then I rip back and then I knit my, my ribbing and then I blocked it again. And I just, I don't know. I feel like it somehow still came out too long. And in terms of the pockets, so last time I was talking about being a little bit scared <laughs> during the pockets. Um, so I did pockets and the world didn't blow up. So nailed it. Very pleased that I didn't end up accidentally unraveling my whole cardigan when I had to make a cut to put an after that pocket. So. Big fan, big fan of that. Okay, Ellie from the present again. Now I realized that I did all this preamble about the pockets and the anxiety about the pockets and what if something was wrong with the pockets. And then once I finally did the pockets, I was like, yeah, I did the pockets, it was fine. And I gave you like nothing. <laughs> so if you too have after that pocket anxiety, if you too were wondering what this was gonna be like and hoping that I would shed some light on it, first of all, sorry about that. Second of all, let me try to like retroactively do a little bit of that. So I did find that Petite Knit has a video tutorial on them. And despite the fact that I don't think it was in English, I think I was just watching what was happening. It was a very clear and helpful visual of what you're actually doing. And the, basically the way that you do it is you're like picking up a certain number of stitches in one row and then jumping up two rows and picking up those same stitches two rows higher up. And then it's in the row in between that you make your cut and you start unpicking just the ends of that row. And because it's sort of sandwiched between these two lifelines, you're very safe, nothing's going anywhere. It's all totally fine. I did find it weirdly difficult to try to pick up the stitches for these pockets cleanly in one row without accidentally being like, <laughs> and ending up in a row above, which 
I mean, it's not like I tend to put in lifelines flawlessly in general, like even with all my best efforts and like using my needle to kind of try to like be my little arrow that points to the next stitch I'm supposed to pick up. I still usually at some point end up with like one jog somewhere in my lifeline that I then have to like fix and account for as I'm unraveling. So not shocking, but I was just kind of surprised that in like such a small distance as like the width of a pocket that I was still having this problem. But once I had done one, it was very easy to do the second one because it's only two rows above. So it's very easy to see, okay, now I'm suddenly three stitches above instead of two or whatever. <laughs> but it was actually in doing the second one that I realized at least one of the times that I had this problem that I had done the first one badly in the first place. I was like, oh, I, <laughs> I'm definitely going in a straight line on this top one and somehow meow, these have gotten closer together. So um, that was more difficult than anticipated, but not in a way where like, it's difficult, it's not even the right word. It's just fiddly, like it wasn't hard. I just like had to pay a lot of attention and like try it a couple times, you know? So we are at this really weird part of this project where it's like, the only part I have not done is the bind off, but I think I need to do some undoing before I do the bind off. And so here, here's the question. This has a quite generous three and a half inch ribbing at the bottom. And the button band, or lack of button band, is maybe like an inch wide. And it's the same ribbing. It flows directly into the ribbing at the bottom. So to me, option number one, door number one, is I just rip back the ribbing until its length matches the width of the button band because I think that would also look quite nice and polished. I like how this looks, but I don't think that I like it more than I would like that. I think that as long as it matches this, it would feel nice and uniform and feel intentional. So the question there is just, will that be enough removed, right? I have to figure out how much of this I wanna remove. And I guess I am concerned about the possibility of going to the trouble, of putting in this lifeline, of ripping back and making sure I get all the right rib stitches on my needle because this would mean picking up ribbing and potentially still feeling like, I don't know if I took enough off. So that's, that's door number one and my concerns with door number one. Door number two, I unravel all of the ribbing and a little bit of the stockinette and start the ribbing sooner. And now that still begs the question of, do I rip back enough of the stockinette that I still am doing a three and a half inch rib? Or am I just ripping back enough that I do a shorter, like roughly one inch rib? So there's like door 2A and door 2B. <laughs> and then door three is I actually do surgery and I actually cut off the bottom ribbing. I rip back some of the stockinette and then I graft them back together. I. <laughs> I haven't figured out which of these I'm gonna do in part because I'm really torn about how much length I think I need to remove, but I'm not really sure how to make myself more sure about this. Like maybe if I, can I like pin it so that it's at the length it would be like this? Like, can I like pin it like that? I don't know, I don't know. I just want it to magically be the right length. <laughs> I don't currently know the best way to do that. That's, that's the current state of this and I don't know, I have not yet decided which door I'm gonna go with. Okay, Ali from the present back. So to pick up on where I left off in my last update, you just watched me talk about door number one, door number two, and door number three, and what am I gonna do about this extra length in the card again? So I waited a few days, I waited to see what comments would come in, what people would have to say, and there wasn't really a consensus. You know, there were options ranging from like, honestly, you're not even gonna wear this for a few months anyway, so just put it aside for a bit and see how you feel when you pull it back out. Like, don't risk making a hasty decision now that you're gonna regret later for no reason to just rip a couple inches off that ribbing to you should rip back so much and redo that whole three and a half inches of ribbing. So what I ended up doing was in fact door number two. I decided that I did wanna keep that nice thick three and a half inch ribbing at the bottom. And part of this was informed by, my friend Amy pointed out, because it's so long, if the ribbing is too short, it might actually curl more, which I wouldn't want it to do. And I think I, once I kind of wrapped my head around the potential of having to redo all of the ribbing, I was like, okay, I think I do actually prefer how it looks with the longer ribbing. I do think it's nice. I think I just didn't entirely want to admit that when it was the option that took more work. <laughs> but once I wrapped my head around, like, okay, it's probably for the best anyway. We're gonna prevent curling. We're gonna make sure it's the right length because if I'm just ripping back a couple inches of ribbing and leaving a little, 
that's only two inches removed. If I remove all the ribbing and then unravel some more, I can really control exactly how much length I want to take off here. So that's what I did. I unraveled three and a half inches of ribbing and another three and a half inches of stockinette. So that's seven inches gone. And then you'll recall that in a previous update, I had unraveled two or two and a half inches. So in total, I knit an excess of nine, nine and a half inches on this cardigan. That's, I don't even want to think about how many hours that is. <laughs> That's so many hours. Like there were, I think, multiple project updates where I came on and was like, look, I've done about eight inches since the last time I updated two weeks ago. So like two entire weeks of knitting for nothing, unraveled, wonderful. <laughs> but I do feel like it was the right thing to do. So once I had finally, finally, gotten in my lifeline, unraveled seven inches, re-knit three and a half more inches of ribbing, it was time to do my sewn bind off. And I am so grateful to my friend Lauren, who a few weeks ago had just mentioned to me, by the way, when you're binding off that cardigan, I would recommend you leave the mohair out, just bind off with the merino. She had just recently done a project where she was binding off and was trying to use the mohair at first, and it was just really making things difficult. It's hard to see what's going on, and the way the fuzz kind of tugs its way through the hole and starts to get bunched up. Like, she was just telling me that it was a nightmare. And I'm so grateful that she told me this, because it absolutely would not have occurred to me, to the point where I actually did start binding off holding both strands, was going, this is terrible. And then went, oh right, Lauren told me this would be terrible, <laughs> and that I don't have to do it. So then I removed my mohair and proceeded with my life, and it was so much better. So shout out Lauren, thank you. Another thing that I also want to mention about doing the sewn bind off, and if this sounds really obvious and like a very unnecessary thing to point out, congratulations on being smarter than me. I don't know, I've done several sewn bind offs, and this had never occurred to me. So I find with this own bind off, I like to be very generous with the tail that I leave on the yarn because I really don't want to be in a position of having to join yarn in the middle of a bind off. That just seems terrible. But you'll know if you've done a sewn bind off that if you are pulling feet and feet and feet and feet of yarn through every single stitch, most of your time spent working on that bind off is just pulling, right? That's, that's most of what you're doing. And so it gets quite a bit faster as you go along and the tail gets shorter and shorter but it takes so much of the time. And what I realized maybe a quarter through this bind off was why am I only leaving like a little bit of yarn looped through the needles? You know, you, you have your needle, you thread your yarn through the needle. And if you're me, you tend to leave like maybe, maybe 12 inches of yarn sticking through the other side, like kind of just enough to make sure that it's not gonna fall out of your needle, wiggle its way out. Turns out you should pull that tail of the yarn until it almost lines up with the other end because in doing so, you are cutting in half the amount of yardage that you have to pull through every time. You, you don't want to pull it all the way because you don't want two strands to end up in the stitches that you're making, but leave a few inches buffer and guess what? You saved yourself so much time. And um, how I wish that I had realized this so many sewn bind offs ago. So if this also had not occurred to you, you're welcome. So once I'd finished the sewn bind off, the only thing that I had left to do was weave in the ends. And I, I definitely, I did all the easy ones first, you know, just all the random spots where I'd had to join a new ball. And then I only had left the underarm holes and around the pockets. And those I was putting off just because I knew that I wanted to kind of sew up some holes using those ends and it was just gonna take a little more brain power. So when I finally got to those, I finally made myself do that. And I'm very glad that I did because guess what? You cannot see a single underarm hole. And I dare say the pockets look pretty perfect. There used to be pretty noticeable holes along here and along here. Like they kind of just appear as if from nowhere in the fabric. And I feel like that's really fun. It's like, how are you there? How are you attached? It's just magic. And now I actually haven't measured, but I, I'm, I'm gonna measure. I'm very curious to know how my finished project length compares to what the pattern recommends because there's been so much ado in this project process about how much longer should I be knitting it? Oh no, I made it too long. Let me make it shorter. Oh no, I still made it too long. Let me make it shorter again. And like, there, there's that, that's just been like the last month of my life. And I'm just very curious to know how the length that I settled on compares to what the pattern recommends. Like had I just listened to her, would I have been fine? <laughs> but see, like I didn't even think about listening to her. I didn't even look at the recommended length because I'm pretty sure she's a lot shorter than I am. So like, I don't think that the length that she would choose is at all relevant to me, but let's find out. Okay, turns out I am vindicated because the pattern specifies that the cardigan should actually be three and a half inches shorter than mine is still, even after all of the ripping back that I did. So honestly, kind of a relief to know that 
it wouldn't have just been all fine if I had just listened to her recommendation because that would have been shorter than I wanted it to be. So I did I go awry in customizing it? Yes. But was I still right to customize it? Yes. Okay, I feel like I've made you wait long enough. Let's admire this cardigan. I feel like we need a choir of angels. Look at the beautiful, elegant pockets that don't have holes at the edges anymore. The underarms without holes. Also worth noting is that the line that you used to be able to see in the fabric where I had blocked it and then continued knitting, you can no longer see that. Blocking the final chunk made it match the top part perfectly. And I think it's a perfect complement to my Jurassic Park t-shirt. It just, I just want to like walk around and let it like float behind me. Like, look at it. Look at the movement. So I have actually worn this a decent amount since I finished it already. I only pulled it off the blocking mats like maybe five days ago, but I have worn it um, every single day since then. And if you're thinking, Allie, it's July, never underestimate my ability to be cold. So you can see the length that it ended up at, and you can see that it definitely angles down toward the front. So it's closer to the floor there than it is at the back. So I feel really good about this length. I feel like this looks great. And also there's a bit of buffer room where if it grows a little bit, those front corners still aren't gonna be touching. So I did find in wearing it, Number one, really fun to like sprawl out on a couch and use it like a blanket and just like cocoon yourself. <laughs> also fun is when you're going downstairs, I did find myself reaching to pick it up just to make sure that it's not like trailing along the stairs and getting stepped on. And if you're wondering if picking up your cardigan like this while you go downstairs makes you feel like some sort of like fancy Regency woman in a period drama. Yes, it does, and I highly recommend. Maybe I should climb up my ladder and then you can see the bottom of it better. <laughs> Ta-da! I I don't even really know what else to tell you about it. I just love it. Actually, I should probably say I, in wearing it the last few days, have loved the sleeve length. Despite the fact that they blocked out a little bit longer than I realized that they were going to be, I have not found them to be in the way at all. I've just found them to be super cozy. I do feel like somehow the pockets have like gotten even lower. So if we're revisiting my pocket positioning, I do maintain that the original written height would have been too high for me, but I think that the correct answer would have been maybe halfway between the recommended number and where I actually put them, which was twice as low. So maybe just, maybe just split the difference. Maybe that would have been perfect. There's still, I can still perfectly comfortably reach to the bottom of them, but my arms are significantly more straight in doing that than I thought they were going to be when I did all these calculations. So turns out that in a long droopy cardigan, pockets are going to end up lower than you think they are. Just, just, just know that. Like if you decide to do this cardigan and think, I feel like where she's telling me to put these pockets are like just a little bit above where I'd want them to be and I should move them down maybe just leave them where they are and maybe that'll turn out right. Just that, that, that's what I would do. And like I said, when you're wearing this cardigan, the front corners do definitely droop down further than the back does. So if that's something that you think would bother you, if you would really like it to be a uniform length all the way around when it's on your body, I would recommend you consider adding in short rows. That's not something that I felt like I needed to do. I could have because I, I did actually see someone suggest this before I did my ripping back. So I definitely had an opportunity to, but I felt like I just, I didn't feel motivated to do that. The way that it falls didn't bug me, so it didn't really make any sense to me to go to the extra effort of doing short rows. But if that is a detail that you feel like you would really notice, definitely consider adding some short rows at the bottom. So yeah, I've already worn this quite a bit. I really pushed myself to finish the bind off last Tuesday evening because last Friday afternoon, I was heading up to my family's cottage and I really wanted to have this sweater there. So I was like, okay, I need to finish this Tuesday night so I can get it blocked and drying. Because the thing with this cardigan, is that when it's laid out to dry, it's only two layers deep in most places, but at the pockets, it's four layers deep and those take a real long time to dry. And I wanted to make sure that it had time to dry before it was time to go to the cottage. And I did, and I was so happy to have this because it turned out to be kind of a rainy, chilly weekend at the cottage. So this cardigan got used out on the deck on chilly mornings. It got used around the bonfire. It got used when I was inside on the couch while it's pouring rain as my little blanket. I did also get a brief moment in the sun for this picture, but it was too hot to stand here in the sun with the sun for very long for obvious reasons. As far as the pattern itself, this was my first ever petite knit pattern. And I don't know, I, I almost forgot to like say anything about the pattern in this video because I just, I just have no thoughts really. Like it, it was a functional pattern. I feel like petite knit is knit so often that I, I kind of thought there would be something more distinctive about the patterns. And I, I think really what might just be distinctive about them is just the designs themselves and their particular sort of attention to detail in the particular 
Scandinavian style that they fit into. But as for the actual written pattern itself, I just, I found it good, fine. I, d I, d I didn't really have questions. I, I, at the very beginning, like I mentioned in the very first vlog, I just couldn't really conceptually understand what I was doing, but had I just blindly followed the instructions, like it, it would have worked. It just was kind of puzzling to me and maybe a little schematic of what I was actually doing would have been helpful. But besides that, it was all very straightforward and it's also, it's a pretty simple pattern. There's not a lot of very involved instructions because sort of once you get things set up and you get your raglan going, you're just doing your raglan increases and then you're just doing sleeves and then you're just knitting body and body and body and body and body for days weeks, months <laughs> in this case. So it's not a challenging pattern. It's a pretty clear pattern. Yeah, no no complaints about the way the pattern is written. I think that it's reasonably approachable and pretty simple to understand. And yeah, if you're considering knitting a gesture length cardigan broadly, is this a pattern I'd recommend considering? Yeah, 100%, I think it's a good one. So now the big question, was it worth it? I spent six months knitting this giant cardigan. Would I recommend it? Would I do it again? And honestly, a thousand times yes. I mean, your mileage may vary on this, but for me, this was a nice long-term project to have going on. I did work on a few smaller projects, sort of one after the other, as side projects to this one, especially when it got unwieldy and it was hard to take places to knit on. So I did still get a little bit of variety that way. It's not like I was only knitting the same thing for six months. But because so much of this cardigan process is just, you're just knitting stockinette flat back and forth for feet and feet and feet. So it's it's so simple that it's so easy to put away and pick back up. So I feel like just as an ongoing long-term project to have on in the background to your other stuff, I feel like it works so well for that. And I'm sure that for some people, there's going to be an element of, okay, but it just takes so long. Like I just can't convince myself to work on something that it's, just, it's gonna feel like it's never gonna be done. And I think that this is kind of a know thyself situation because there's absolutely a personality type where you would pick up and just never end up finishing and you know that that's you. And if that's you, A plus self-awareness, this pattern's probably not for you. But if you are someone who does tend to finish your projects but you're just feeling daunted because the time scale just feels so much longer than you're used to that it's just intimidating or just feels like I'll be working on it forever, but the final day where it's done is never gonna come. I submit to you the thought that the time is gonna pass anyway. Like six months from now, that day is going to arrive. And the only question is whether it's going to arrive with or without this cardigan. The fact that something's going to take a long time doesn't really make sense as a reason not to do it. It only makes sense as a reason not to do it if you would actually rather spend that time on something else, if you feel like in that same time, I could knit three smaller things. And I think I would really rather have those three smaller things. That's one thing that's totally valid. Make those three small things instead. But if you're really just daunted by a six month time scale for its own sake, the time's gonna pass anyway. And I think you should cast this on. All right, so that is all of my thoughts on the No Frills Cardigan by Petite Knit spread across a six month time span. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you've been following this journey from the beginning, even just from the middle, from a few weeks ago. Thank you so much for following along. I, what am I even gonna talk about on the channel now? I need to start working on new things. So stay tuned to find out what I end up casting on next. If you're not subscribed, I would love to see you here again. Please do consider subscribing. If you're already subscribed, you're my favorite and I'll catch you next time. Bye.